he dominated yet and still through quote-unquote chicken uh, kitchen slaves these children were born and their fathers knew that they fathered those children and they did not want to see their children continue in slavery so they decided what we need to do is to pack them up especially after Shay's rebellion is to pack them up and send them away from the United States and let them go and help to found a new country one of the leaders of that was who? was Clay who was then speaker of the House of the United States at the time and it was these people that facilitated these boats coming over here and first landing over there at Chevron. Okay? They were the ones that did it because it was their children that they wanted to get out of there because they didn't want them to continue to be trapped in slavery. Okay? I don't know if you heard the history of Afro Russell. How uh, he got here. Okay? His, his grandmother was the sister to Lincoln's his wife. Okay? And they were living there in uh, Kentucky in the United States when her son fathered a child by one of these kitchen slaves. Okay? The child was Alfred Russell, who later became president of Liberia. Alfred Russell, then, upon the death of his father, his mother remarried. But she never granted him freedom from slavery prior to uh, her marriage. When she got married the second time around, due to the laws of coverture that existed in America at that time, he continued to be a slave and a slave in his mother's own yard because all of her property went to her husband. They went to court. The records are there in the state of Kentucky. They went to court on this issue. And Abraham Lincoln was a lawyer for this lady, you know, a Todd, her name was, before she got married to this man. And the court ruled in favor of the new husband of his sister-in-law. At which time, she said, all right, I'm prepared to give you everything in this world that I own, but let my, let my grandson go. Let my grandson go. Then finally he agreed for the grandson to go and he found his way that he ended up here in Liberia. And just amazingly enough, later on he became a president too of Liberia. Okay? So, I'm only saying this to say that there was this division but the powers that existed in America at that time wanted to see their children the ones to come in the founding of this new nation and to be the ones that would rule and so that obtained for a period of time here that is a historical fact you know I heard someone I was waiting yet yesterday to testify I heard someone says that we have to change history uh, redo history. You can't do redo history. History is history. You know, once it's properly written, once it's properly recorded, history is, re is history. It is immutable. It is immutable, sir. You can't change it. But what we can do is to take that history and look at it and, and revisit it from time to time and from there try to glean out ideas that will help us for the future, for the present and the future. But history is history. Historical facts are just that. They are historical facts. You cannot take those historical facts 
and blot them out, like how they tried to do in, in uh, Soviet Russia some years ago or China. No, you can't do that. So we have to accept responsibility for our acts. We have to accept responsibility. We do something wrong to our fellow man. Is that responsibility to get up and say we are sorry for that? But you know, I tell you a joke. It's not a joke, it's a reality. I have a friend, a black American, good friend of mine. And he said to me, he said, you people in Africa today, you Africans, you decry us black Americans. He said, but why? He said, only because your ancestors will run faster than our ancestors. So, you know, our ancestors got caught and put on those ships and sent over there. Whereas your ancestors who could run so fast, they stayed on this side. Now, are you all going to blame us for that? Because we're taken and sold? That too, sir, was wrong. But it's all part of history. And we have to accept history for what it is today. 